Section 4.5 is indeterminate forms in L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule would have saved us a lot of headaches in Chapter 2 when we were looking at the, um, the asymptotes. So suppose that f of a equals g of a equals 0. That means that we're in an indeterminate form with 0 over 0. And f and g are differentiable on an open interval, then the derivative and the derivative of g is not 0. Then the limit of the ratio here where these functions are 0, if you end up with 0 over 0, which we had when we were evaluating limits, that's going to be equal to the limit of the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. Be careful, this is not the quotient rule. What this says is if your if by direct substitution you're in an indeterminate form, and if we plug in a zero here, we end up with zero over uh, zero, zero minus zero is zero. If by direct substitution you get zero over zero, L'Hopital's rule says that this limit will be equivalent to the limit as x approaches zero of the derivative of the numerator. What rule do we have to use when we take the derivative of the numerator? Product rule. So this is the first times the derivative of the second, which is going to be negative sine 7x times 7. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. The angle here is 7x. Minus 1 is not included in the angle. First times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first all over the derivative of the denominator. So that's going to be the derivative of sine is cosine. 5x. Once again, this minus 5x is not included in the angle. So that's cosine 5x times 5 minus 5. Okay, so let's clean this up a little. Let me see which one. This one right here. All right, so let me clean this up so that it's easier to look at. We're looking at the limit as x approaches 0 of, this is going to be a negative 21x, right? Because 7 times 3 times a negative uh, sine 7x plus 3 cosine 7x minus 3 over 5 cosine 5x minus 5. If we try direct substitution now, we end up with a 0 here. And cosine of 0 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. And cosine of 0 is 1. 5 minus 5 is 0. We're still in an indeterminate form. So we can use L'Hopital again. We're going to take the derivative of the top again and divide it by the derivative of the denominator. We're looking at a ratio of derivatives. The limit of a ratio of functions will be equal to the limit of the ratio of the derivatives as long as the function, the ratio is in an indeterminate form. So we're just taking the derivative of the Over the derivative of the bottom. We're not using the quotient rule. Uh, Let's see. It's I, like it's separate. Yes, like two separate things. Okay. That's what the, that's what my caution is right here. Okay, but we do have to use the product rule now, so this is going to be the first times the derivative of the second. Derivative of sine is cosine times 7. First times the derivative of the second plus the second function 
times the derivative of the first plus 3 times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine 7x times 7. And then the derivative of a constant is 0. Over the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this is negative 5 sine 5x times 5 minus, no, not minus anything. Derivative of a constant is 0. Egad. It really is this one on and on and on forever. All right, so let's simplify this. Let's rewrite it to clean it up. This is the limit as x approaches 0 of, what's 7 times 21? Thank you. Negative 147x cosine 7x um, minus 21 sine 7x minus 21 sine 7x, right? Oh, we can combine these two like terms, can't we? That's minus 42 sine 7x, so 42. All over 20, negative 25 sine 5x. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. By direct substitution, that term's going to 0, that term's going to 0, and we end up with... 0 over, oh my god, another 0. So we do L'Hopital's again. No, you're not. Yes, as long as you have an indeterminate form. It will stop eventually and soon, I think. <laughs> We're evaluating a limit. Remember how hard that was? Yes, Justin. When the top one's cosine x is, is cosine zero is one, so it wouldn't be zero over zero. Where? At the top ones. This? No, like where it says like five cosine five x minus five. Yeah. Cosine x is one, so it wouldn't be zero. Cosine x is one. One times zero. five is. Five. No, cosine 0 is 1. Yeah, 1 times 5 is 5. Minus 5 is 0. Whew. Scare me. All right. Product rule. First times the derivative of the second. Uh, plus the second times the derivative of the first minus, what's 42 times 7? 42 times 7. Carry over 1. 294 cosine 7x all over negative 25 times 5 is 125 cosine 5x. I don't think this needs cleaning up because I kind of sort of did it as we went. Oh, I did. The uh, that, uh, yeah, okay. and we can combine these two, can't we? Negative 147 minus 294. Yeah. Fine, whatever. We'll, we'll leave it. Let's evaluate now using direct substitution. That term goes to 0. Cosine 0 is 1, so we end up with negative 147 minus 294 
over negative 125. This is going to be positive 441 over 125. So there's the value of that limit. Why on God's green earth anyone would ever ask you to evaluate that limit? But I don't know. The important thing is you know you can now. Yeah. And you'll be asked to on your next test, not this particular one, but in general. As long as you have an indeterminate form, you can keep going with L'Hopital. The minute you don't have an indeterminate form, you have to stop. It's, not really, it's, not really that it's tedious. Just, it's just here, yeah. derivative over Yes, derivative, right? derivative top over yeah, derivative at the bottom, not, not the quotient rule. <laughs> All right, these are other indeterminate forms. Infinity over infinity, infinity times zero, infinity minus infinity, and we can evaluate all of these limits if they're in an indeterminate form. So let's look at problem two. We're looking at the limit as x goes off to infinity, the infinity of, essentially we have infinity minus infinity squared, which is infinity, and infinity plus infinity is infinity. This is an indeterminate form, so what we notice is, yay for us, L'Hopital applies. Okay, so this will be equivalent to the limit as x goes to infinity of, what's the derivative of the top? 1 minus... 16x over 24x plus 5. Well, as x goes to infinity, isn't this equal to infinity over infinity? Okay, find negative infinity over infinity. Yeah, it's still an indeterminate form. So, guess what? L'Hopital applies. All right, but I think we're going to stop here. Now we're looking at the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of the numerator is negative 16 over 24, and the derivative of, I'm sorry, the limit as x goes off to infinity of a constant is just that constant, and we end up with 16 over 24 negative, which reduces to negative 2 thirds. Well, if you remember your rules from asymptotes, the degrees are the same, and negative 8 over 12 reduces to negative 2 thirds. So, yay, we feel better about this, right? <laughs> okay, example 3. We have the limit as x approaches of inf infinity of e to the negative x square root of x. It might help if you rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity of the square root of x, or let's say x to the one-half, how about that, over e to the x. Because e to the negative x, I can make the negative exponent positive just by kicking it into the denominator. And now when we use direct substitution, we have infinity over infinity, an indeterminate form. So we can take apply L'Hopital. So this is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of x to the 1 half is going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Divided by e to the x. Well, rewriting this to get rid of the negative exponents, this will be the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over 2 square roots of x e to the x, and that's 1 over infinity, or we already know that that limit is 0, right? Not as painful, but that limit looked horrible before we thought of L'Hopital, or knew about L'Hopital. Example 4. Yes. 
except for infinity. <laughs> All right, in example four, this is now going to be 1 raised to a power of infinity by direct substitution. This is 1 raised to an infinity, which is an indeterminate form. So what we're going to do here is, because it's an indeterminate form, L'Hopital is going to apply. So what we're going to do is we're going to let, we're going to use a substitution. We're going to let y be equal to 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x. And then we're going to take the natural log of both sides of this. So we can use the power rule. So what we're going to say is now take the natural log of both sides so that we can use the power rule. And we have the natural log of y equals the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x. While using the power rule, this is the natural log of y equals x, natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. So far, so good? Now, if I take the limit as x goes to infinity of the left-hand side, and the right side, um, went blank, sorry, x natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. And I find, let's look at this, this is going to be infinity by direct substitution. This side right here is infinity times 0, which is an indeterminate form, which means L'Hopital applies, which means if I evaluate the right side, I've got the limit for the left side, but y, we said, was what we originally started with, so by default we have the limit we want. So let's rewrite this right side as the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x divided by 1 over x, because this is now in the form of um, 0 over 0, which is the indeterminate form I'm more comfortable with. Yes? So how did you know to take the natural log of both sides? Um, Experience. Okay. If you have a variable in the exponent, that's you need the power rule to get it down. And natural log is, is like a one-to-one -one operation, like square root's a one-to-one -one operation. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can do it to both sides of the equation and not change anything. It's called a, excuse me, a logarithmic no, transformation. The, I mean the variable exponent, like the variable exponent down so you can work with it. Yes. Okay. This is called a logarithmic transformation, and it's a quite a common technique in mathematics. Okay. So, but would I have expected you guys to know that sitting where you are today with the knowledge that you have? Probably not. But now that you've seen it, I expect you to think of it. Okay. See, the more I show you, the more accountable you are. You want me to quit showing you stuff, right? Yes. No, I can't do that. Life's about learning. All right, so L'Hopital applies. Thank goodness for happy. So this is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of this top function, which is going to be the derivative of 1 plus 1 over x. Well, that's negative x to the negative 2 over 1 plus 1 over x, right? The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of x to the negative 1 is negative x to the negative 2. So it's the derivative of the argument divided by the argument. And this is all over the derivative of 1 over x, which is negative x to the negative 2, right? 
and I can make this a fraction by putting it over 1, and that's going to give me the limit as x approaches infinity of negative x to the negative 2 over 1 plus 1 over x times, flip and multiply the 1 on the bottom, 1 over negative x to the negative 2. Guess what? Those cancel out, and we end up with the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. And as x goes to infinity, this is equal to 1 over 1 plus 0, which is 1. So what we see is, if we go back here, the limit is equal to 1. But we had the limit, that means therefore, that the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of y is equal to 1. Is that right? Because we that's what we did. We said all of this was equal to 1, which means that this limit is equal to 1, right? How do we get that natural log off of here? Don't we make that a power of e? And then what we see is e to the natural log y are going to cancel out, and we end up with the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the natural log of y is equal to e to the first. See, this right here is going to cancel out and just give us y. And y is what we said that we were going to let that whole thing be equal to. No, it's e. What? The limit of that is e to the first. By the way, get familiar with this. This is the limit. This is e using a definition of a limit. We've defined e as a limit. That's going to come in handy in Cal 2. Yes, I can. And that wraps up section 4.5.